<clears throat> Hello, ladies and joins. It is a Thursday night, evening, I should say, and I have nothing better to do. I never have anything better to do uh, than to try to provide some form of entertainment for my dwindling audience. Um, this time, I've decided to um, tell you the answer to say yes to that long-standing puzzle, what I called a great puzzle, and I called it a great puzzle for a good reason. A puzzle like um. Let's see, um, solving the, you know, proving the Riemann hypothesis. That might be a great puzzle. Or a difficult puzzle. But a great puzzle is something that looks difficult, but has a very easy and obvious, and seemingly obvious answer. And as soon as you see the answer, you ask yourself, why didn't I think of that? So stupid. Here's a problem. Here in the... Oops, going back to the simple, simplest case. Debug. And view test. Common lib. And a view test that uses common lib. TS string, for instance. Now, how come I got two of those? Probably hit it twice. Um, okay. Now, um, this was the puzzle. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, this, as I said, is a C function. I don't need that C. That's just for you know t to so that I don't have to change it if I change to Unicode. Still works the same way. And um, if I run it through this point and look at the call stack, uh, there's that. There's something. And there's something here, uh, but uh, what you didn't see was that all this stuff got printed out, and that stuff gets printed out here. Uh, program started. It's the last line. So this this uh, line here was printed before we got here. So somehow or other, common init got called, and that's what I want. I want to have something to come in and do some initialization first, and I don't want to have to worry about uh, making up functions, callbacks, and so on. All right. Now, in the normal world, C world, C++ plus or C world, there is a C style function called main. Uh, if you know, if you recall, uh, C style functions, however you declare them, We'll always have a preceding underscore in front. Always. So the the exported symbol for, for what I've written here, if this were a C file, it's not. See? Um, uh, there. Uh, it would be underscore main. Now the question is, 
how can I have a C? What I've got here is a declaration in a C++ file of a function called main, but that function is a C style function. If it were C++, I, I, you know, I would, this would cause a linker error. I'm not getting a linker error. Alright, now initially uh, the trick I was doing was occurring in this file, but uh, eventually I cleaned that up. I'm going to show you that um, everything, there's nothing special here or anything. The only thing special about this project is that it imports an object file called uh, console and obj. <coughs> That's just an object file. The code for that file happens to be here. Although it's not built here, it's been pre-built. I'm going to have to build it again and again and again. Uh, and then I'm going to put them in a special lib directory. I have various ones for the different builds. And the one this one's importing is this. And this is the one you will find that um, this object file that I'm including in my project contains a C style function called underscore main uh, position 0, section 31 no type because it's C external that's, that's exported underscore main uh, this one undef is in, in the static linking world is an import so this something in here uh, is expecting to find something with this name in the world okay it turns out that that something is this now I suppose I just want to forgetting about name. I want to make a function foo that's C a C function. Okay. How would I go about doing that? Um you know, using macros. What I could do, or whatever, what, like one possibility, what I really want is for this line to contain an extern C declaration in. Now, I want to also change the name. So, my foo. I would like that line to turn into that line. Okay. Oops. So I could try this. Change foo to say extern C. Uh, now I've already got a type there. My Okay, now making that search placement will result in this. Okay, so now that was my first idea to try something like that. But this is what happens. And it's very specific. Uh, linkage spe specification requires the use of the 
extern keyword um, require the use of keyword extern and must precede all other specifiers. That is, this word extern must precede everything, all specifiers on the line. Okay. So how am I going to define foo if I'm going to use define so that I can get this extern to the left hand side of this int? That's the problem. You can't define int foo. That's, that's not a single symbol. You can only define something. One, you know, string of characters. Uh, and then you can translate that to anything you want. This doesn't work. So, <laughs> now this seems like an impossible problem. How is it possible to put, to put something ahead of this int? Right? I mean, if you're going to do, you do something like define foo, and rename it to a different function, which is what I want. I want to rename this main so that so that it doesn't conflict with my other main. Make it C and therefore get the extern to the left hand side of this int. Like, I want this. Something like, something like that, right? Uh, how can it be done? Well, uh, we'll go back to foo again. <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to say now, the uh, the, the answer I'm going to give, give you uh, solve the problem and it's one of those answers that uh, you're going to want to kick yourself for, for not thinking about if you did thinking if you did try thinking about it but first let me give you a hint so you can hit pause and you can try with the hint we have to do something with this this here this definition of the letters foo that will eat this up okay and then allow us to, to properly put the extern where it belongs that is we want something that's going to delete that int okay so you can hit pause think for a while and now I'm going to say the answer. First, um, you make up a random string of uh, characters. There's a random string. Oops. I mean, um, um, okay. Followed by two brackets and semicolon. Now I'd like to put int here. Okay. Now, do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? Let it. Let us make this search replacement. I'm just going to put that where foo is. Okay. Okay, now, so here I've defined a function called mjdo1opaak, uh, which doesn't exist, but I'm allowed to define a function. And then on the next line, I have experience c int by foo. Okay. So that's essentially what I've done.
Right. In here, it's going to be in the wrong color. If lib is not defined, which it isn't defined when we're building the, the executable, this part, in fact, is irrelevant now. Um, I undefine all these things. Uh, now we're in the non-unicode world, so main is just some random string of characters, two brackets, semicolon, extern c, int, triple underscore main. Recall that is the function that is to be called by this object file. This object file, before doing that, calls this function. So it calls this function, and then it calls this function, and that's what our little name has become. Because I've written down main here, and so therefore there are two underscores here, and I get a third for extern C, and so that's three underscores. Uh, the underscore T main just allows me to use uh, the same symbols, whether it's Unicode or Multibyte. And that is the answer to the conundrum. So simple uh, that you ought to be kicking yourself for having not thought about it. Not thought of it. Um, and that's it. See ya.